You got to get some positive yards here just so you can punt the ball from a normal distance. Manning on third and ten. He fires, and the catch is made by Cruz, who breaks free. One man to beat. Victor Cruz down the sideline. Cruz is going to take it all the way, tying an NFL record. 99 yards from Manning to Cruz. Yo, and that right there was another milestone moment in this man's illustrious career, Heather B. This dude has transcended sports and culture all in one dance. Uh, one of the most celebrated receivers that ever hit the football field. He even got bars, ladies and gentlemen. He even got bars. We have him online with us right now, the one and only Victor Cruz. Victor Cruz. Give a big round of applause. Yo, yo, yo. What up, baby? What up, bro? Always good to hear from you, man. Vic. Heather and Tracy on with us, too, man. Y'all say what up, up to us. What's up, bro? What's going on, so Tracy? How y'all doing? Cruz. Hey, yo, man. We've been trying to make this happen for a long time via DM or people in between us. How you been? What's been up? I've been good, man. Everything's good. Just trying to stay motivated during this quarantine time, man, and trying to stay positive and level-headed throughout all this madness. But we staying strong over here. Sway, how you been, man? I'm good, man. I, 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 I mean, I can't complain. I'm in Harlem, Vic. You know, I, I, I took a walk to Riverside Drive yesterday just to test out the atmosphere. It's all like people people are being responsible um i also wanted to call you out man i saw you and your daughter did the tootsie slide challenge and uh <laughs> you know my daughter and i we did it too man i was wondering maybe you saw me and my daughter do it and then you just kind of bid our style or was that just <laughs> uh, i mean y'all you know swear you've been inspirational you feel me so obviously i saw your video <laughs> And just had to do it off the inspiration. You already know how that goes. <laughs> you see, you see that it, you know, have I see you have about to defend you because I know you're a Patterson, New Jersey dude. Whoa. You know, yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> Vic, what's up? It's Heather. How you doing? Um, not Heather, only, what's going on? I'm good, family. Yeah, Jersey represent, and of course, Sway knows everybody here knows I'm a diehard Giants fan. But I, I wanted to actually um, just compliment you on something. Um, I saw you a couple years ago um, doing your rounds in the studios up at Sirius XM, and I was in the hallways. I didn't want to track you down, and, and I was talking to somebody else and bother you. But what I appreciated about you is that so many people were stopping you and, you know, to say hello and ask you for pictures and different things like that. Mm -hmm. And I noticed how you stopped and greeted everybody, and it was so nice to see. Um, we often talk about how people – perform when when the cameras are on but there was no cameras around you nothing like that and i just watched you from a distance you know welcome everybody in that either shook your hand or wanted to grab a picture with you and it, it, it was i always want to say wanted to say if i ever saw you i would just compliment you on how you were off camera it was just so dope to just kind of be a fly that, that and a lot watch you and watch you interact with everybody it was dope vic for real i appreciate that very very much thank you yeah, man, we always big enough, Vic, man, all these compliments. Vic, you know, man, Vic, you wish your you... way because it could go the other way. Like, sometimes people, easily, you know, yeah, so, it could go yeah, the other way easily. They, you're very recognizable. You played in New York. It's one of the biggest stages for sports. And so people yep. could be a kind of way, and not everybody feels up to it every day, and it's kind of hard to handle celebrity. So to see you like that, it was just like, wow, this dude is mad down to earth. So it was just dope to see. All right, all right. All right, Tracy, <laughs> Tracy you want to you want to give Vic some compliments too, Vic? <laughs> um, Tracy, go ahead. Yeah, I want to I want to compliment Vic at being good at the same job as us. That don't always happen when okay. it comes to true. athletes or when it comes to other people in the industry. And I mean that with full sincerity as well. And on that note, Vic, what can you say about preparing cuz pop of the morning, I think you honestly kill it on there. I think you bring Thank such you. a natural sense of charm and then also intellect. And it's great because so many people have known you just for sports for so long. And we've seen people yeah. try to pigeonhole athletes and to see, especially athletes, just using more than their muscle. You know what I mean? Like using their mouth to speak what's important to them is dope. But not everyone has that kind of je ne sais quoi on camera. Were you nervous about going into that next level of your career? And how did you prepare? Um, I was definitely nervous to go into that next level. You you know, you never go into the next phase of your career, of your life without feeling some type of apprehension and, 
and without feeling some sort of, you know, to butterflies in your stomach, so to speak. But I was ready. I think, uh, you know, obviously transitioning to ESPN after my playing days, that just made it, you know, I was getting my training there, being live on live television, mm-hmm. understanding how it all worked, understanding just how TV worked in general. Yes, I was talking about football, something that I could speak to effortlessly, but I think the TV of it is what kind of helped me transition from there to pop of the morning. Whereas now I understand exactly what's going on from a TV perspective. Now it's just how do I implement my own personality into what we're talking about and my own, you know, per, you know, personality into everything that we do. So I was ready for it, but it was definitely a, it was definitely a little bit of a nervous point for sure. Gotcha. But, you know, uh, you do excellent, man. You're a natural. I even watched you on your Instagram. I saw you interviewing uh, Little Dicky. Um, mm-hmm. and, uh, and what's his, uh, what, what's his homie name? Gutter. Is it? What's his Gator, name? Gator, 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 who's hilarious. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I was watching you going, man, this dude, it, it's fun to Tracy's point and to Heather's point when, um, I think when you break through the mode of people will pigeonhole you, especially as an athlete, we've seen this happen over the years where athletes have been told to shut up and dribble. And, um, and once they leave their game, their uh, respective game, uh, they're not given many opportunities. So when you see somebody like yourself um, shine in all of these different areas, it lets you know it was more to this dude's brilliance. It was more to this dude's skill and his talent that made him who he is. And I was watching the doc. Um, I think it was I Am Giant. And um, yeah. there was something you said in the end, and I'm going to play it back for you right now. And I want to get, and that was done sure. a while back, but I want to get your perspective on this. Football is a source of life to me. Football is a is a was a way out. Football was a a way to to, to get my education paid for, to to get get my family taken care of. That's what I use football for. That's what football means to me. Is a source of of life to do all the things that I ever dreamed of. There's so many more things that I want to accomplish in this great game and in, in, in my life that I can't just let it end now. This this isn't the end. Yo, round of applause for that. That was amazing, bro, because I, I often, like, Thank the you. same, you know, well, the same way you feel about football, I try to tell mm-hmm. folks who are in the rap game that, you know, I get it. It's a way of life. But also make sure as it's using you, you're using it. Do you, Absolutely. when you, you know, when you speak to young, aspiring athletes, is that the messaging? You because not everybody's going to make it to the football field. Not everybody's going to make it to the basketball court, or not not everybody's going to make it to the Olympics. Do you find it hard trying to push that narrative into their mind state? I do mainly because you know. To be honest, a lot of guys come from impoverished neighborhoods, right? That education might not be at the forefront all the time, and sports might be their way out. I mean, let's just be real, call it what it is. Sports is what's going to get them and what they're aspiring to become is a professional athlete. So a lot of the times they put so much onus on that that when they get to become – even when they become professionals – and they may not pan out because the average lifespan of an NFL player is only three and a half years. So what are you going to do at the age of 24 years old, 25 years old, and you have and you can't rely on the NFL anymore? You better show – in those three or four years, you better show and prove that you have other talents and other things that you can offer so that people can gravitate to those things with, with you know without sidetracking your main focus, which is being a football player, making sure that's taken care of. But you better be doing some other things to, you know, diversify your portfolio, so to speak, and get your, you know, personality out there, things that you're interested in, other things, because you're at no higher uh, moment in your life than when you're a professional athlete. Everyone's going to open the door for you. Everyone's going to have a conversation with you. Everyone wants to sit down with professional athletes and talk. And while you're a professional, you have to take advantage of those resources and making sure you're showing yourself on different platforms so that when you're done, you have these other things and these resources to lean on. Yeah, that's yeah. that's that's brilliant. You know, you and you talk about mm-hmm. how, how um, a lot of us look, man, I use rap to get out. You know what I mean? Growing up in mm-hmm. Oakland, I thought rap was going to be I was going to be LL Cool J one day and I was going to solve all my family's problems. I get that. And also totally get 
when you look at some of the cases we're seeing in, in the NBA now, that young man Zion um, going through this court case of an agent uh, wanting them to admit that people gave his family money during his college career. When you see uh, um, o- OBJ going on the field and handing out money to um, after that Clemson game against LSU to, to college students and, you know, and I'm not so mad at that. You know, you know, because people are struggling and you are playing for these collegiate institutions. They are making millions of dollars and you're still struggling. What are your thoughts on that? Uh, college players actually being able to receive uh, money during, while they're in college or perks? I love it. Mm-hmm. I love it, man. I love it because you get these, these college athletes that become, you know, large figures and large monetary figures. And, again, they come from – impoverished neighborhoods, or even if they're not from impoverished neighborhoods, there's dollar figures there for them to, to make. Why not go out there and do that? I'd be lying if I say people didn't help me during college. I struggled. You know what I'm saying? I remember who I was in college. I could have used my name and likeness and signed a couple autographs up in this car dealership to get $1,200 or something like that just to take care of myself through college, let alone my family and other people that I could have been sending money back home to. You know what I'm saying? So, I understand what those college athletes really go through and to have some extra money to use, to be blessed enough to be in a position to use your name and likeness while you're in college, while you're struggling, while you're in a position where you're just also trying to figure out how to manage money too. I think that's another thing is to kids need to find out how to manage money younger so that when their professionals in those three, four years start to dwindle away, they understand how they, how they can invest the couple hundred thousand or million that they've made already how to make that stretch for them so they're not broke 10 years later. Man, Victor Cruz is here, man, dropping these gems. Um, I feel like and, I'm dropping gems today. This kid, yo, yeah, Lord, hey, collecting. Man, you flying too, man. I ain't mad at it. Um, and uh, we're going to talk about the Titan Games, which is um, premiering on the 25th, Monday, May the 25th. Uh, this is season yep. two, and this is something that The Rock, Dwayne Johnson, um, is the host and executive producer of. Uh, so is um, his wife, uh, Danny Garcia. Um, she's the EP on the show. This is the kind of show that I feel like I might have missed. I might have missed my time. I might have missed my, my my opportunity to be <laughs> on it, man. I, maybe a couple years ago I could have done it, uh, but I, it ain't I, never I, too late, Sway. A couple a couple weeks in the gym, you get right back to it. You hear that, Heather? <laughs> so will you do it? I don't yeah. hear anybody backing me up in there. That's crazy. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> Known this man a long time. Vic, you see how they okay. do me? Right. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm going to fall back. This is a crazy show, man. Like, it's 13 episodes. Um, everyday people, everyday walk of life. It's, it's almost like uh, Monday morning quarterbacks, you know, or, you know, weekend warriors, people who were great athletes at one point but couldn't really – go down that road and they're competing with the likes of a NFL Ironman legend, uh, 10 times pro bowler and Joe Thomas, Super Bowl champion and Victor Cruz, uh, all these different folks, Clarissa Shields, two time Olympic gold medal winning and current undisputed boxing world champion. What What is this bully pope at you guys? Are, why are y'all bullying on regular people, man? Are they even going to be able to compete? <laughs> I mean, I mean, you'd be surprised. I'm, I'm gonna leave it at that. I don't want to let any cats out the bag, but you'd be surprised the athleticism and the courage that these people that these people have. These people come from, you know, these people are doctors, healthcare workers going up against us, and you know, they are everyday heroes. And yeah, they train for CrossFit. They may train for, you know, obstacle courses like that, but they're everyday people. You know they're not professionals they haven't come from a professional background and then you have us on the other hand that were hand selected by the rock obviously and we're coming in and try to make him proud and try to make sure that you know he chose us for a reason and to show who we are and to show that our athleticism being professional athletes can even supersede the everyday superhero but what kind of like what are y'all competing like what are some of the exercises y'all competing at Man, I'll tell you what, there's this obstacle course called Mount Olympus, and at first sight, you're like, man, I'm in shape. I could, man, I could knock this out. They kind of walk you through all the different, uh, you know, courses, all the things you're going to be doing, and by the end of it, mm-hmm. you're like, oh, it's going to be fun by the end of this, and then you actually do it when it's live with a live audience, and that, you know, that fire gun goes off, and you're off to the race, and you get halfway through that thing, and you're like, okay, 
this separates the men from the boys. And um, on the way back down, you're just exhausted. It literally takes everything out of you this entire course. So I think the fans are going to be in for a treat. It's going to be fun to watch. What, what what do you think the um the overarching purpose is of this show? It's not just so people could watch, be entertained by people competing. What do you, I mean, when, when did, did, did Dwayne Johnson call you and, and personally invite you to be on this show? Uh, no, I mean it was more of an email. I don't think he had my number personally. I mean, he could, I would gave it to him, um, but it was definitely, it was definitely yeah. an email. Um, but yeah, I think it's. I think it's, A, in this time that we're in right now, I think this is why they pushed the show up. I think it wasn't supposed to come out until a a few months from now because everyone's home and everyone's missing live events, right? You're missing that live audience that that gets you excited, that makes you excited to watch sports. And I think this is going to give people that feeling again because we obviously got to film it right before the pandemic. So there was a live audience there. You'll feel that energy of the crowd. You'll feel the tension of each obstacle course as we're battling and doing our thing. So... I think that part of it will be fun to watch. And it's like, you know, The Rock is there. Carrie Champion is, ho- you know, one of the hosts of it. I mean, it's just, it's fun. It's a fun TV show with fun people. And you get to know us on an even deeper level as athletes and as professionals. And it's going to be fun. Um, I think everybody will enjoy it. Yo, yo, Victor Cruz, Heather, got this whole, he got this publicity thing down packed, man. This dude is unwavering. He's like a human, so- you like a human sound bite, Vic. Come on, man. <laughs> I'm Quite the orator. To, I, when I'm on sway, I gotta be. I gotta keep it together. I gotta make sure I'm on point. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Oh man, I've heard you on Who Kid, dude. You, I know what you get down with, man. <laughs> yeah, this is true. See, Who Kid? That's a different. You know, that's a different show. That's a different, <laughs> that's a different show. That's a different show. <laughs> uh, hey, one of the. I, I noticed um, that you um, posted a happy birthday to a, a citizen of Sway in the morning. We always love when Karuchi um, comes up on the show, man. So proud of her. Yes and her career and uh, what she's been able to do. Another person that was probably pigeonholed early on and now has been able to show the world all her vi- uh, various skill sets and talents. But how are you, like, what tips would you give people who are away from each other in a relationship during quarantine? Like what, are, what kind of things are you doing to make sure that she don't forget about you? Oh man, I think for starters, make sure your phone plan is solid. Make sure your FaceTime and your Wi-Fi and everything that you got in your crib is solid because you're gonna spend a lot of time on the on the uh, on the FaceTime. Yeah. So make sure you got that. You make sure you got that down. But I think the biggest thing for us is teaching. Like she's teaching me how to cook and teaching me how to just uh, move my way around the kitchen and make a couple things while I'm here. So I think that's kind of also brought us even closer together, just the fact that she's giving me recipes and literally walking me through step-by-step on FaceTime uh, how to make these meals and do different things, especially having my daughter here uh, more often now, obviously with the whole school thing and just having her around, being able to cook meals for her um, has just been has been amazing. So she's been helping me with that. And then I just think communication, I think now's the time where you get to learn, you know, you get to really learn your partner, really learn what they like and don't like and you know, you got to do birthdays in quarantine. You got to figure that out. How are you going to be romantic during a, you know, during a birthday and during a quarantine? You know, how are you going to yeah. do it all? And uh, and you find a way and you figure it out. And and I think you learn more about yourself and your relationship during this time. Did did you or, did you do like one eight hundred flowers or, or like? No, nah, see what uh, see, <laughs> I, she was doing a uh, she was doing a a quarantine a bikini quarantine Zoom call right with all her girls. So I decided to just send over a nice, inexpensive Fendi bathing suit to her so she could wear it while she's on her little Zoom call. It wasn't uh-huh. nice at all, swear, I I, did you hear that stunt right there, Bizzo? Get that little, <laughs> so, little so Fendi baby. You know, I love it, man. Uh, Victor Cruz is here. If you want to talk with him, 888-742-3345. I feel like I'm hogging the conversation. Y'all want to jump in or are y'all good? <laughs> yeah, well, I was going to ask about Carucci, but because a lot of men – Um, aren't really that great at cooking. I'm not going to say all, but they're realizing now is the time to figure out what to do around the kitchen. What have you been learning from her? What recipes? Oh, man, she got, she gave me this, uh, this shrimp taco recipe. That's crazy. Like really crazy. It's really good. Um, she gave me, we did this blackened salmon recipe that was really good with Brussels sprouts and cauliflower rice. I'm really moving around this kitchen, guys. It's really not a game. (laughs) <laughs> um, what else? <laughs> what else? Did we, I made salmon cakes the other day. My mother found this recipe online, 
and uh, and we made it together. And I was actually I actually taught Karuchi that one on the Facetime, so that was cool. Okay. And then um, so yeah, that was. I mean, we just been. I literally just been at home looking up recipes like I'm a midwife in the crib, just <laughs> figuring it all <laughs> figuring it all out. Yeah, okay. I love it. Victor Cruz is here, man. We celebrating also it's, um, Biggie's birthday, Notorious B.I.G. Vic, I know you a hip hop head, man. Uh, what's your list, bro? Who, who, it, 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 what's your, who's your top five? Oh man, I don't think I've ever been asked this before. Uh, mm-hmm. My top five, in no order, because I don't like okay. the order. I'm gonna just say my top five. Okay, Obviously, that's... Biggie, Pac, mm-hmm. Hove, um. Big L Ooh. and Jada Kiss. Ooh. 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 That's, Ooh. that's a nasty that's a very five. East Coast. That's the East Coast five. But I, that's all. That's me, though. That's, I didn't hear that's no Jersey five. in that. I, I didn't hear no Jersey in that. Man, that. listen. This, this <laughs> I, mean, I mean, Red Man is six for me. Red Man is six for me. Okay. Um. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. That's okay. There we're gonna, it is. <laughs> we're gonna leave it right. We're gonna leave it right there. But you you didn't include an artist who's like only been out ten years or less. Okay. Not one of those are in your top five. Nah, not, I mean not right now. This is top five of all time. We're saying yeah. or top five yeah, right that, now. See, you asked me two different. There's two different questions, Sway. Okay, okay, you're right. Good point. Good point. That was your all time. <laughs> okay, now this is only one. Time. Yeah, that's your all time. I'll stick with that. All right. Okay, Vic, you got good taste, man. Yeah, Damn. That's a good list. <laughs> that's a dope list. Tyler, what's up? Tyler in Oklahoma City. Tyler, good morning. What up, Tyler? Good morning, Sway. Thanks for answering my question. And good morning, Victor. Uh, I had a question. Good morning, man. Do you have any plans in the future to go in the NFL broadcast booth on Fox or CBS or something like that for long term? Because you seem pretty, seem pretty on point with your with your radio and TV voice. Um, that's a good question, man. I've I've been asked that before. Um, I'm I'm thinking about it. I mean, it's never off the table, especially with the money that Tony Romo is getting paid out here. I mean, sheesh, I'm on it. I must have just – I should have did that from the beginning and not chose football at all the way they get out of checks now. Um, but, yeah, I think, you know, whatever uh, opportunity – I'll stay close to the game. I'm always going to be at the Giant games. Well, who knows if they're even allowing fans or whatever the year is going to look like this year. But I'm always around the Giants community and staying close to football. And, obviously, working at ESPN has brought me even closer to the game. So I'm never uh, opposed to an opportunity like that. I think it will be cool. All right. Um, yeah, this NFL is it's gonna be interesting how this works out, right? Like yeah, you, yeah we talk about this. Heather does the uh sports report every day and it's just it's what what was the latest? It's just they don't know. I don't think it's it's hard. I, I just think it's hard to figure out because again, football is just a contact sport. You know, um people the the fans, the the it, it's just so much to kind of try to figure out i think with football and i've been saying and much as i love the game it's my favorite sport out of the major you know sports but i think it's going to be one of the last to to figure it out you know baseball they're talking about no high fives no (laughs) you know no sunflower seeds in the dugout no it's just like crazy crazy. how are you gonna how are you supposed to how are you supposed to hot (laughs) not high five somebody like are you serious yeah man. man and so i don't understand how all of this is going to work out, and I miss it. I love football. I'm a huge fan. I'm just – I just want to – obviously, we want everybody to be safe, but trying to figure out how this is going to work out is going to be crazy. So, um, yeah, we don't know. We just don't know. Hmm. All right. Well, um, Vic, man, uh, shout out to Victor Cruz, man. Thanks for calling in, man. When, when I, I want to say come to the studio when we open back up, but – we just don't know. As long as we six feet, we could be six feet apart in the studio, can't we? Yeah, mm. yeah, but in I'm not. Sense. I'm not trying to be I'm just walking not touching in anything. Yeah, <laughs> man, no, I ain't touching a damn thing, man. And it's, it's like being in a petri dish. I'm good, man. Um, look, the Titan Games Monday twenty on the twenty fifth, eight p.m. on NBC. Give Victor Cruz a round of applause, Vic. We might have to have you call in again and just comment on some sports or some music or whatever's going on if you're down for that brother you cool with that i'm always down sway just holler at me i'm here all right cool and then um did you have a homie that rapped or something 
Uh, I did. His name was Cancun. Yeah, he's from Patterson, New Jersey as well. Okay. Uh, is he nice? Is he ready? Uh, I think he's ready, Sway. I think he's ready, to be honest. I mean, I'll shoot you some of his info or whatever, but I think he's, uh, I think he's ready. He's here. Okay, cool. That's what's up. Victor Cruz, man. Give him a big round of applause. Vic, thank you, man. You know you a super you, citizen, Trace. man. Thank Let's you, Heather B. Thank you, Tracy. Family Appreciate always. y'all. No Love, doubt. Vic. Thank you. All right. We coming right back. Sway in the morning. Shade 4-5. Black.